I have an incredible group of guys that are all working in the same line, same vision um, to help us win championships. Um, to beat Ohio State, to beat Michigan State, to beat Penn State, uh, win the Big Ten, and, and you know their end goal. So we're all working on the same vision to do that. Um, is it a little bit more work? A little bit, but this is something I've prepared for my whole life. Sharon Moore, Michigan offensive coordinator and offensive line coach this week. Yeah, something he prepared all his life for. You know, every time I hear Sharon Moore, I think, you know, Sharon Moore sounds uh, sounds like a head coach, future head coach, looks like a future head coach. One day he's going to be a future head coach. Michigan's lucky to have him. We're lucky to have you here on this Thursday. It is uh, it's time for the Maze and Blue Reviews. Good afternoon, Michigan football. We're here weekdays. At one o'clock, talking about the latest in Michigan sports. And, you know, this weekend, the table is set. I'll include Friday, tomorrow for the Michigan weekend. And it is a, a loaded weekend. This show is loaded in terms of uh, items to talk about. And without further ado, we're going to jump right into it and tell you what we are talking about. We've got Sharon Moore has got to be smiling in terms of recruiting and for the the big boys up front he's going to be cracking a, a crack at a smile uh, got a big grin on his face we'll get to some of that the latest with uh, michigan football recruiting actually let me amend that because we have some uh, breaking news via basketball recruiting that we'll also get to coming up just in moments uh, we've got the hype di- uh, train 3.0 we get ready for the spring game coming up on Saturday. We have the monster. More information on the NIL Michigan monster NIL. Uh, we'll cover and tell you what we know about that. We'll start with the spring game, but as I mentioned, we've got um, we've got some breaking news. And, and first, it goes uh, to hockey. <laughs> You know that Michigan's in the Frozen Four, that it will take place um, about a week from today, Thursday, April the 6th. And the day after that, they will name the Hobie Baker winner. Michigan has had two in the long uh, history of Michigan hockey. They're looking for their third, and there's a couple gophers and Adam Fantilli from Michigan. I think Fantilli's in a great spot here to win this. Uh, both teams are in the Frozen Four. And wouldn't it be nice to see? I don't, know, I don't care, but it would be nice to see Michigan and Minnesota uh, in the finals. So that the, the trio of finalists was just announced a little while ago, as was this news with basketball. <laughs> Michigan has gone to the transfer portal and they have uh, got a commitment from Namari Burnett, a six foot four guard who was um, at Alabama last year. Previous to that was at Texas Tech, but now he's coming to Michigan. He averaged around six points last year and 15 minutes per game. So you've got somebody from the transfer portal. It has happened quickly, and it is Burnett, Namari Burnett. And you might say, who, what? Is this a good land for Juwan Howard? I'm not 100% sure about that. I went back to rivals from a couple years ago, and, you know, they ranked the prospects. And I looked at where Burnett was ranked. And I saw him as a shooting guard, a top 40 shooting guard. I thought it was interesting because the Burnett and the final rivals 2020 rankings, he was a top 40 player. In fact, he was uh, ranked number 39. But if you look one below him, Hunter Dickinson was ranked at number 40. So uh, who would have thought or who would have known that Michigan uh, and possibly could he could end up playing with Hunter Dickinson? We don't know for sure. Uh, the real Hunter Dickinson has not made any declarations about what his intentions are for next year. But remember the name, Namari Burnett. And you might say, eh, it doesn't sound all that exciting, 5'6", 4.6". This might sound a little bit more exciting to you to know that he was a top 40 prospect. I looked at his numbers to see if there's anything that jumps out that you would like. 
a year at Texas Tech, playing 12 games, got hurt, and then playing 27 games, starting nine games for Alabama, who was number one for a long time last year. The Alabama basketball team, who really was under the microscope with everything that was going on there. But so you look through some of these numbers here, and is there anything that jumps out that you really like? Field goal percentage, a 37% field goal percentage uh, overall. Mm, Nothing exciting there. Just on twos, 46%. That's good. But then you know that you look at the three point percentage here and it's at 32 percent. that's not exciting uh he is a shooting guard to me I, you know I, if i'm just looking at the stats i don't like a 32 percent uh three-point shooter that's not that exciting to me uh is there anything else here you know is a rebounder for a shooting guard less than an assist less steals nothing really there, but I think the thing, well, it's not, the, I think it is what stands out to me is that Burnett is a 32% three point shooter. But maybe Juwan Howard can get the best out of him. Maybe he has found a home after being at Alabama and then being at Texas Tech. And now Michigan, three schools, uh, three years, we'll see. Is this something where you're like, oh, I can't wait to see this guy. I mean, uh, Michigan, get your seats ready, you know, get your get your tickets ready for the uh, for the final four. Make your preparations. You know, I, no, I wouldn't say any of that. I would say we'll see. You know, this is one of those things where if you're a coach like Jawan Howard, today's not a day where you're all like, oh, great, man, the portal, man, where Michigan basketball is really rocking the portal. You can just look at it and you're like, oh, really? Okay. And then this is where a staff and a head coach, this is where they make their hay. I mean, they've got all these different players in the transfer portal. They could have uh, let it play out a little bit, but this is their move. And so we'll see. This is, you know, Michigan, I, I think we can all agree. Uh, with Juwan Howard heading into a pivotal season uh, after not making the tournament last year. So Burnett better be better than uh, his numbers have suggested. And, um, you know, they took a swing and they got him. And it seemed like they were desperate. So this was something, uh, an aggressive early move. Juwan sees something in him. And so we'll find out. That's my opinion. They're like my overall opinion, is this a good move? I'd say I don't know, it doesn't look that good on paper. Uh, you do go back to his high school uh, rankings, you know, for whatever those things are worth, they're worth, they're worth something, not worth nothing. Uh, but he has not done uh, very much in his first two years. And so now here he is. And so we'll see. Uh, is that a strong opinion? We'll see. No, if I had to say this is not knocking my socks off. This is not making me think that, you know, Michigan is making a push to be one of the better teams in the Big Ten. It's a move that Jawan Howard, his first move that he's made here in the offseason in a year in which he didn't make the NCAA tournament. So I'll say uh, it better be a really big pickup for Michigan basketball and Jawan Howard, but I would say it, it doesn't um, – I could understand if, you're, if you weren't really excited about the move, but look, you know, where was I really excited when Michigan brought in uh, Mike Smith? Not really. I mean, I looked at him like, Hey, you know, he looks, he looks like he's got a nice shot. He looked like a, uh, I remember watching him. I, I said a, a poor man or a less athletic, uh, poor man's Derek Walton. When I watched some film on him, mm, he, he's the good shooter. And then Shondi Brown was, I like, Oh, Shondi Brown, you know, Got an NBA body in, you know, he did a power five conference, you know, average, uh, what was it? 12 and six, if I remember correctly. So, you know, there was a little something there. And so this guy, a former uh, highly thought of recruit, who now hopefully has found a home. That's what I think of it. So we'll see, you know, if you're a really good uh, coach, these are the things that you're able to do. You know, it's about, you know, basketball, you know, this, and I know this. Basketball now 
It's certainly about identifying talent. It's about managing your roster. You got guys hitting the transfer portal. You got guys uh, declaring to go pro. You have to decide if you want freshmen. Are you going after five stars? Are you going after, you know, three, four-year type guys? Are you thinking that, you know, hey, are you okay with those guys redshirting some of them? Uh, are you going into the transfer portal? And I, the answer to that, I think, is you have to do all of it. I mean, you have to do all of those things, and you see the level of success Michigan has had. Uh, the transfer portal, you know, Howard with Smith and Brown, that was the jackpot that um, – that Jawan Howard, a lot of people are like, that eh, was John Beeline's team. It was the second year, you know, that jo- eh, it was John Beeline's team. John Beeline didn't go into the transfer portal and get uh, Sean D. Brown or Mike Smith. That was Jawan Howard. So he gets the credit uh, for doing that. But so we've seen the uneven results in the transfer portal, you know, Baker uh, and Llewellyn, you know, Llewellyn got hurt, Baker, you know, the uh, Michigan fans seem to like Baker a little bit more than I do. Like, you know, he was a little disappointing, you know, to me coming in as a sharp shooter and a a volume three point shooter. That was my expectations. And, you know, he didn't, he really didn't meet those, but those are my expectations. And uh, that's what I'm here for. You know, give you some opinions on what I see that I don't always match up with what everybody else uh, is saying. I hope the best for him. Uh, I'm talking about Baker. Uh, he might be coming back, and you guys might be all like, I told you so. He was better than Jet Howard. Okay, well, we'll find out. Maybe. We'll see. So that's it with basketball, roster management. Uh, Howard making his uh, first move when it goes down to uh, uh, basketball, and you got a a new one with uh, Burnett. Okay, um, we have – other things to get to. Let's keep it going. We've got the spring game, as you know, coming up uh, on Saturday. It's going to be on the Big Ten Network, 3 o'clock. Uh, we will have a special spring football podcast coming up after the game. So you need something to do between the spring game and the Final Four. Now you got it. You can watch the VCast right here on this very feed that you're watching after the spring game is over. We will fire it up. I don't know if it'll be immediately. I'm working on the plans. I don't know what I have to leave the game early. Maybe I won't go to the game. Maybe I'll be ready to go. We'll see how that works. But uh, after the the spring game, uh, we'll be here talking about Michigan football on Saturday. Now, this particular part, which I was, you know, thinking I was just going to have a little fun with. The weather is very important for Saturday because this forecast has been it's something that looked like it was going to be manageable, but now is something that you have to make a big decision on if you're somebody that's thinking about going to the Michigan spring game. Remember back on Monday, you know, 48 degrees, 49% chance of rain for Saturday, you know, it up to 49 degrees. Yesterday it was up to 50. Today, my long range forecast says it's going to be 51 degrees on Saturday and the rain from a 49 to a 54, a 36% chance. You look a little closer at what they're saying about Saturday is that it's going to be rainy in the morning. You know, that could change. I've seen it. You know, we know Michigan, that could change. But at least that was a little bit of good news that the rain was expected in the morning. But then it was supposed to, wind was supposed to pick up and the, the, the temperature was supposed to, I don't want to say plummet, but go down uh, into the 40s. Uh, and not just windy. But 15 to 25 mile per hour gusts with uh, a chance that some of those, you know, get up to 40. You deal with the rain, deal with 50, 45 degrees. Can you deal with 20 mile an hour winds, 15 to 25 mile per hour winds with gusts up to 40? That's your own personal choice. You know me, I'm a fair weather fan. That would be like, hey, Michigan spring game, gust 40 miles an hour. Ooh. But let's see. We'll see. You know, you're, I'll give anybody credit, big time credit for any Michigan fan who heads on down to the big house and sits through the entire spring game with wind gusts that are talked about up to 40 miles per hour. 
I, you get a little good afternoon Michigan football badge. We'll have them made up. We'll see how that ends up working out. But uh, there it is when it comes down to the spring game and the the forecast. Andres wants to make sure I do the 50 and forecast throughout the season. Otherwise, we're not going to believe that you're a real meteorologist. You know, I just look at, you know, the, I think this is something. I don't know how old you are, Andres, but I think it's something just as you get older, you just, uh, you know, you're more interested in talking about, you know, what you had for breakfast or what you might have for dinner. And then, you know, talking about the weather, you know, you, you I remember when I was young, you know, you'd see like, uh, you know, older people like in the movies or something sitting around on the park bench, you know, feeding peanuts or bread, you know, to the pigeons. And, you know, they talk about like, yeah, I guess, you know, we're, we're expecting a little rain tomorrow or something. That's what they do. You know, you sit around older people uh, talking about the weather. You know, but my daughter who came back from Florida yesterday, they had a wonderful time down in Orlando, sun splashed, you know, it's Florida. What the hell? And they were coming up here and I told her, I said, uh, you know, I'm really sorry, but it's, it's, it's chilly. You're not going to like it up here. It's, it's not good weather. And she said, I can't wait to you say that this is going to be the last uh, cold day of the spring. And we put it behind us. It's kind of our joke. And, I, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm a little older now. I sit around talking about the weather. And here I am. We'll see what happens during the season, Andres, if I can uh, continue that. Ringo's calling for hail in late November. Ringo, I am calling for hail in this particular broadcast. The account, 22, has always been uh, an OG. He's talked about the weather since elementary school. Well, there you go. It's an interest for you. You know, that's it's good. Speaking of uh, the other kind of forecast, and that is recruiting forecasts, we've got a lot of them come in, coming in. I have two Fithian forecasts out right now. One is for Jaden Davis, the quarterback out of Providence Day in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is the eve of his commitment date. It's happening tomorrow at 1.30. We will be here. We will carry the announcement. We are looking forward to seeing what Jaden Davis has to say about where he's going to play his uh, next, I was going to say four years, next three or four or five years. In what college? I'm expecting it, obviously, to be Michigan, since my forecast is in on him. I would suggest that if you're a little uh, on the nervous side or anything, stay away from his Instagram. I was there yesterday, and, you know, he was, he was showing pictures of what he looked like in a Clemson uniform. And then the next picture, he was showing what he looked like in a Tennessee uniform. I don't know if he's now I am curious and it may be curious enough where I'll do this right now. He uh, I'm waiting to see today if he then has an Ohio state and North Carolina uniform set in there. And then tomorrow at one 30, he drops the Michigan one, which I think would be very clever now, I can't say that I've followed it every single day, so he may have already put the Michigan uniform out there. Uh, but the only thing I did see was yesterday in the two. And for some reason right now, I'm not getting his uh, – well, I do follow him. You know, I just have to stay with me for a second. Following. Let's see. I want to go back to the latest people that I followed here. Jaden Davis. There he is. Let's see. What are you saying? He doesn't have any pictures right now out there. All right. Just seeing real quick if there's an update on that. It doesn't seem like it. Offers. Maybe this is in the offer um, area. No, no. He's got a lot of offers. Nothing. Maybe he's, he's planning something later on today when uh, uh, he's out there. He's trolling. Maybe. I mean, like, I hope he does the, I hope he does a hat fake grab, the OSU one, and then throws it and then pops on a U of M hat. Hey, you know, like, (laughs) 
the uh, I don't mind the theatrics and the drama. You know, if it ends up blue, any of them putting any Ohio State hat on, maybe then dropping it in a trash can or something. I don't know. Spiking it like uh, you know you would in the middle of uh, Ohio Stadium, like the flag that was planted there. Plant that hat, smash it down. Yeah, that would be nice. Put the Ohio State hat on. Put it on, then put it on the table, and then take a big mason blow hammer. Smash! So then he could put the Carolina one. uh, Pass. Then he could put the Tennessee. Pass. Then he could be um, Clemson. Look at it. Pass. Ohio State. He'd have it on there, and then he'd go smash with a Michigan hammer. That's the old pass or smash thing that's going on right now. That'd be a little clever twist on it. Smash the hat, Michigan hammer. He's going to Michigan. Pass or smash. Jaden Davis. Let's go. Let's see how it works out. So that is our programming uh, tomorrow. 1.30. It's going to be a big Jaden Davis day. Andre saying he's doing this to validate his diva status. I I don't agree that there's a diva status. I mean, he is a, he is a five-star quarterback. Uh, If, if, uh, if he was waiting all the way till signing day and then he got to signing day and then on signing day said, you know, I just got to push this another week or then you'd say, Oh, okay. Now he's milk. You know, February's a long ways away. He's making his decision now, tomorrow, you know, in March. Like, you know, I don't think there's anything to suggest that he is a a diva. I mean, was Jair Hill a diva when he didn't have Michigan in, you know, his Instagram post in his final five? And then the ruse was complete when he picked Michigan. I mean, like, I don't know if that's a, you know, guys are just having fun with it. Just because you're a quarterback and, you know, you're, you're interested in all of these schools and you've made, you know, a final five, that doesn't mean you're a diva. You know, I would say, you know, if they were, if a kid was asking me, you know, for advice about recruiting, I would say, yeah, you know, you know, have your favorite schools, go through the process, meet the coaches, have a lot of questions, go on official visits. Uh, See what all the schools have to offer. You know, come up with a list of things that are really important to you. You know, academics, um, uh, playing time, uh, NFL chances, NIL opportunities. You know, put those all down and, you know, see what each coach has to say about it. And then the one, when you go through all of that, try to keep an open mind, even if you really like Michigan, uh, keep an open mind. And then. It's going to be a tough decision, but then, you know, you know, whittle it down wherever you're at 10 or 12, you know, get it down to five and then set a date and, you know, make a decision. And there'll be people that'll be calling you a diva by going through a process, which is really important in your life, you know, considering, you know, where are you going to go to college? Uh, But don't worry about what all the outs, don't worry about what Andres is saying, calling you a diva. You know, he might be the furthest thing from a diva out there, uh, Andres. Now here's somebody else that's really hard on Jaden Davis, and it's Antoine. He says uh, it's a wise idea to troll a fan base that's already getting sick of him. Yeah, you guys, Andres and Antoine, you guys are the like extreme minority. Everyone else is not sick of him. They are interested in what he has to say tomorrow. Uh, They understand that it's a process. Uh, They also understand the bigger your name is and the more highly regarded you are. And he is as highly regarded as almost anyone in the country. There's going to be a lot more fanfare that is involved. So you're going to have people, uh, even from their own fan base of one that you're going to go to, that are going to be against you. And that are going to say that they're sick of you and things like that. But 
I also think it's a little bit, and I understand people just like you watch a game and what you say about the team, you know, we're all different. We're all, we're all made up of, uh, you know, of different stuff when it comes down to watching the games. Some people like, you know, really uh, are, are always like going to be negative towards things. I, I think it cushions the blow if, you know, if things, I'll tell you really quick, I, you know, I probably said this before, you know, I think about it sometimes. My, my late stepfather, he loved sports, but he, he really, he loved hockey and that's it. He loved hockey and he loved the Maple Leafs and he loved the Red Wings. Unfortunate for him because the Leafs, you know, had won since 67 and for the longest, or wait, 65. And then the wings had won since 66. It was like the, it was a long time. It was a long suffering Leafs and wings fan. And he would always say the same thing. Like yeah, he would go into a season. He's like, you know, these, this, I'd say, well, the red wings look pretty good. They got a lot of talent. They don't have the goaltender. Uh, and then what about the leaf? They don't have the defense always on and on and on. And then the red wings, even when they got Scotty Bowman, they don't have, they don't have the goalie. Well, so when they finally won it, I remember calling him and thinking how excited he would be about, you know, the red wings winning the Stanley cup. And I was like, Hey, they won it. And he's like, They'll never win it again. They'll never go back to back. And I'm like, you, you enjoyed nothing at all about this. I'm not saying that that's you, Andres or Antoine. I'm saying a lot of people will run down recruits. And then when they go somewhere else, they, they'll just, you know, I told you so. I don't know. We're all different. Recruiting's a wild, it's a wild experience anyways, to invest in you know, what, uh, you know, a 17, 18 year old is going to think, you know, they could change their minds all the time. It can happen. So we'll see. Let's, uh, let's move on. We've got some other stuff. Somebody asked earlier in this, uh, a broadcast, let's see. Uh, it was Bo. Nice name. Bo was asking how many offensive line men will Michigan take? He's talking about somebody might commit as he put up a tweet last night. Then there's Frazier, Anderson, Sprague. Let's turn Frazier into a monster tight end. So that's what Bo was saying. Well, there is some news with recruiting, and he mentioned Sprague. Andrew Sprague stands six foot eight, listed at 270 pounds. And he is, uh, well, he's only a junior uh, in high school. Wow. He's a big one. But he's a four star. And it's not my forecast, but Josh Henschke. The publisher of the Maze and Blue Review put in a forecast for Sprague last night. Sprague is coming in this weekend for the spring game. Sprague, it sounds like, is going to commit to Michigan this weekend. Bo had mentioned a bunch of other different linemen. One of them was Anderson. And Anderson, who recently put out his top eight, who then he had Michigan, but it was really a who's who. Oklahoma, Alabama. He had a ton of schools in there, all big time football schools. But Michigan is looks like they're in a great spot to land Max Anderson. He's out of uh, Rick Reedy High School in the Lone Star State. So then you've got Anderson. And you're like, wow, I think it's a question. Like, how many are Michigan, how many offensive linemen is Michigan really going to take? And then speaking of forecast again, my second forecast is for Blake Frazier out of uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, His dad played Steve Frazier for Michigan, actually made a start on the 97 championship team for a game for U of M. You don't hear anybody else saying that because nobody else really knows that. Uh, except me. There's some things that come up with age that end up helping you. Now, you start looking at this offensive line, and you see that right now Michigan has two that are committed in Roebuck and Hamilton. 
And then you go down and Sprague looks like that he is possibly going to commit this weekend. I have a forecast in for Frazier, and there's a lot of people that believe that Michigan leads for Anderson. Would they take all five of these offensive linemen in this class? And the answer is yes. They will take all five of these guys, I would think. And they will be happy to do it. And it doesn't mean that Roebuck and Frazier will automatically, or the Sprague will be your tackle and Roebuck and Hamilton will be your center and these two. But, you know, you could do all kinds of things there. But, yeah, you could never have too many good, highly rated offensive linemen. But, you know, they're all highly rated. And I think Michigan would take all three. Uh, I don't know, is Anderson a slam dunk? Is Frazier a slam dunk? Sprague? We'll find out about these guys. But uh, first things first, Sprague, I would not be surprised if I was sitting here on Monday and I would be bolding this and saying that Michigan has now three offensive line commits. That's how it's going for U of M when it comes down to the offensive linemen. So uh, that's that. Let's get to some of the feedback. Uh, The coach says, that's your opinion, Dennis. Apparently you haven't been on social media too much. Yeah, well, I'm giving my opinions, uh, Antoine, just like you. I I don't mind that you give your opinion. And, you know, if my opinion is going to be different than yours, then, you know, we're just going to have a difference of opinion. That's all right. I still like you. In all of that, but um, you're, you're not going to sway me like, oh, OK, Antoine says this. And look, I, you probably do spend more time on social media. I talk about it an awful lot. I do take a look. Today, my plan is to watch the Tigers at three o'clock. Now, during the game. Well, I maybe will I pick up my phone. It's a baseball game. I know it's supposed to be, you know, at the pitch clock and everything. It's supposed to be a lot snappier. I'm going to see if it feels a little snappier, but usually during a baseball game, you know, I can pick up my phone and say, hey, what's going on on the Maze and Blue Review? Maybe I'll fire up a post. Maybe I'll send out a tweet. So I look a little bit, but I don't, I don't think I spend as much time as your, uh, your average person on social media. Account 22 is going to be honest here. It's what we like. He says Underwood has made me much less excited for Davis. Hmm. This is Bryce Underwood from Belleville, who is the top quarterback in next year's class. And him being right down the road and Michigan wanting him as one of three QBs. Yeah. Yeah. I would say this account 22 for me. I'll be as honest as I can. If the excitement meter for Jaden Davis from zero to 100, I would put my excitement meter right now at a hundred for Jaden Davis, because it looks like he's going to Michigan and he's very highly regarded right now. I would put my excitement level for Underwood at 99. He's been in and he's talked to Michigan. He's right down the road and he's going to be the top guy next year. What could push it up to a hundred is if, uh, you know, he sets a date and it looks like Michigan's in the mix. Why can't you be at a 99 and hundred for both of these guys? And maybe you said, look, you just uh, had Davis at a hundred and Underwood. So maybe, you know, you're right there too. Can't you be excited about both? That's my question. Andres is not sick of Davis. I hope he ends up blue, but I want Underwood. Here's another one. I I think this is cushioning the blow a little bit. I I think you'd like, oh, hey, Davis doesn't come. Eh, We get Underwood. Here's the news. You want both. You know, to to be really honest, you wanted, here, I'm going to be really honest now. You wanted Dante Moore. I wanted Dante Moore last year. I want Jaden Davis this year. And I want Bryce Underwood next year. Boom, boom, boom. And I think it's time that you 
raise your expectations for Michigan. And we're going to get to that coming up. You know, Michigan, wherever, you know, you thought they were at, and uh, uh, you know, during Rodriguez and Hoke, you know, maybe slid out of the top 10, talking about national football programs, college football programs. And then with Harbaugh, they were like there at 12s and, and, you know, knocking on the door of the 10. And then obviously they busted through to get back into the top 10. You might want to even put them into the top five. I will from what they did the last two years. But with those top five teams, top five teams in college football, every year they're getting the number one quarterback. It's time to raise your expectation. Michigan should be going after Dante Moore and getting him. They should be going after Jaden Davis and getting him. They should be going after Bryce Underwood and getting him. Every year they should be getting the top guys. And so don't say, oh, I don't want this guy this year, so then we can go all in next year. Don't be doing any of those things. Get full enthusiasm on the top guys, and it might happen for you. At least that's how I'm thinking about it. Oh, Antoine had to bring it up. They had to bring up Nichols Harbor. You were right about Nichols Harbor. You were 100% right. So you got that out of me. I don't, I got to tell you this, Antoine. Maybe I will. I, I, I would have no problem in five years of sitting here looking at this camera. I hope this jacket fits a little looser. Uh, actually, a lot quicker than five years. We'll be sitting here in five years talking about Michigan and, you know, the next uh, whoever. And and, and old Antoine is going to send the feedback and say, well, what about Nichols Harbor? <laughs> back in, back in uh, 2023. What about old Harbor? Who ended up going to you know, the Harbor would probably be like, a, you know, an all pro defensive end. Wide receiver or something. Maybe he'll be in the Olympics. We'll be able to track his uh, career. Antoine, uh, I could go 10 for 10, 100 for my next 100 forecast. And Antoine's going to be like, well, what about Nichols Harbor? You're right to ring him up. You were right about Harbor, Antoine. I mean, I got to give it up to you. Dave makes a good point. We needed Jaden Davis. JJ could be gone. Unless y'all want Davis Warren starting in Columbus in 24. And then y'all will be mad. It's a good point. What we really want is Davis to commit tomorrow. And then we want JJ McCarthy to stay next year as well for a senior. And then we want Davis to take over as a sophomore. And then as a sophomore, you will have uh, Underwood as a freshman. And then depending on how things go with Underwood and with Davis, Davis could leave after his junior year. And then Underwood would be in there starting as a sophomore. It all works pretty well the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, academics weren't all that important. If you were reading the tea leaves, I wasn't. I bought into it. Andre says he would care more about recruiting rankings if the evaluators were people that played the game. He mentioned Scar or somebody like Devin Gardner, but they're mostly journalists who have never played. Yeah, I mean, there's a point that I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what each uh, individual company and and who's doing their evaluations. What I do know is that, you know, you, you don't necessarily, you know, you can have an a, a, a opinion. Well, not just have one, but you can have a pretty good opinion. And you didn't have to uh, play the game in in the pros or in college. You, you, you know, you could still go out there and, you know, and some of the best coaches and some of the best GMs and talent evaluators didn't necessarily play. But I do believe it. It does help. I would imagine that some of those places do have people. And sometimes, the, you know, the guys that played, you know, it helps. It, it does. It does help. I don't, you know, I don't make it just like, you know, it, it does help. But I don't know. I look at all of the evaluators in, you know, in high school and college and, and even in the pros, you know, we're all, are all going to have our opinions when we see the guys play and everything. I just use it as a guide, you know, like, um, 
it, it is interesting how we, uh, you know, I'll just say as fans, you know, we'll look at the quarterback board. I, I watched Jaden Davis throw for four minutes the other day here, and, you know, I hadn't really watched the other guys. If, if somebody's watching all this film and then, you know, they're making a point about, well, love this guy, they like this guy a little bit more, they would rank him, you know, that's fine. Uh, you know, so it's one of those things like, hey, this guy's coming in. He's supposed to be one of the best. Let's check it out. You know, somebody said something about Davis Warren. Davis Warren could be better than all these guys. The way he's throwing it around. You know, you... let's see. Let's see how it goes. I do know how biased you can be. I do. But the bias for me, it happens in fantasy football a lot. Like you'll have a ranking. And even though you have your own off to the side, and maybe you typed it all in there, but if you don't and you're looking at somebody else's ranking and you see somebody that is ranked really high and you might not necessarily like it, but you keep there, – there, it is a bias in your head. It, 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 it happens with rankings. But, you know, I get what you're saying, Andres. Account 22 thinks Warren would start over a true freshman in Davis. Dave says, aren't you guys the same people who were screaming play JJ even when McNamara was playing? Uh, I don't know how many people were screaming that. I was screaming be careful with a quarterback rotation. That's what I was screaming. And then, uh, to my surprise, after there was a quarterback rotation two years ago, last year Harbaugh came out and said there's not going to be one. And I was like, that's a coach. So, but we all we all know that, Dave. We all know that, you know, the, the point that was made about, let's just say J.J. goes pro, let's just say Jaden Davis uh, commits to Michigan. And then you have a true freshman in Jaden Davis, and then you have Davis Warren. Most people will think, "Let's go with Jaden Davis." You know, he's a five star. You're one of the, and we you understand that. You understand what could go in there. Count twenty two is talking about Underwood could start as a true freshman, maybe. Now Victor's talking about somebody else as an offensive lineman. Would Michigan take six? I don't know. Well, six, now you're starting to get into maybe the first five that come in. That's an interesting question, though, Victor, about how many offensive linemen. I, you know, I would think four, easy five, but, you know, what you think of the player? And, again, we'll go back to the rankings. We have all of these guys ourselves as uh, four stars. but. You know, Michigan's board is going to look a lot different. Uh, I don't. I shouldn't say that. It could look a lot different than what I have up there. And with these three remaining, and now we'll add a fourth. And they all have offers. It might be first come, first serve. It also might be a situation where, you know, Sharon Moore is going to be on the line saying, look, we got guys that are – Davis is committing – uh, we got guys that are ready to commit, and, you know, who's in? Who's in? Who's out? Those are good problems to have. All right, a couple more here. Uh, holding Michigan hostage. You know, I, I don't know about I don't know about any of this uh, holding people for a hostage kind of stuff. Let's get to some other stuff. Oh, there's the hype train. Somebody was asking about it. The hype train for spring. Number one on that list, we revealed earlier this week, Amarian Walker. Great size, great speed. I want to see how he looks out there at corner. And Jim Harbaugh started the hype train by declaring Amarian Walker the starter after just a couple days of practice. That's how you get on the hype train when your head coach is like, uh, we're going to be, you know, normally you say, we got competition at all positions. The you know, competition is ongoing. And then Harbaugh is like, well, Marion Walker's our starter. <laughs> oh, there you go. 
All right. Uh, so that was number one on the hype list. Number two, somebody who's been around a while. But this week, Jesse Minter, co-defensive coordinator for Michigan, uh, mentioned that McGregor has a chance to be a dominant player. Who's the next quitty pay? David Ajabo, Aiden Hutchinson. He's a look like a, uh, of uh, Aiden Hutchinson. Who's the next Mike Morris? The hype train says McGregor, which gets us to today's list or player. Sorry. Number three on the hype list. It was a mention by account 22. Uh, I think the day before yesterday, and it is Darius Clemens. You see his picture from the Michigan football. Here I am saying that I don't check out social media too much. And then here it is from social media. From the Michigan football IG account, a photo of number zero, Darius Clemens, six foot three. You know, when we talk about players and, you know, hype, Clemens came in really high, re- highly regarded, and you looked at him, and without being a former wide receiver or player myself, I said, you know what he, he really looks like? He doesn't look like an incoming freshman. Darius Clemens looks like a senior, or if you put Darius Clemens out on, a, on an NFL practice field, and he was running around, you might say he wouldn't look out of place. Uh, he would look like he was an NFL build wise. He's got an NFL build, what I'm saying. And then he was in for spring at the practice or at spring, uh, the spring game last year and for practice. And he caught a touchdown. Uh, Pretty nice cut, touchdown. Cut like the back half of the football, if I remember correctly. It was, a, it was the highlight of the game. Darius Clemens. And then last year, you know, Michigan had, a, you know, with a, the return of Ronnie Bell and and a, a lot of a, a schoolmaker and all, all not so much there, but you know what I mean, a lot of uh, competition for uh, for footballs. And Michigan needs someone. It's 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 a nice. They've got Cornelius Johnson, and they've got Roman Wilson. Those are two really good wide receivers for Michigan. Kojo, Roman Wilson, Colston Loveland at tight end. There's three big time pass catchers. Those are your three top pass catchers. You've got Donovan Edwards coming out of the backfield. You got Blake Corum. Maybe they'll use Blake Corum a little bit more out of the backfield. I would. It seems like they, it's effective. He can catch the ball. I don't know why they they didn't until like. The Illinois game, but I don't know, whatever. They're winning. And a quorum was great. <laughs> the offense was really good. So why would I complain about things that are working great? Because, you know, that's what we do. We complain a little bit. But as you go down, if they're not going to use A.J. Henning as much as a wide receiver, and then you start talking about the depth. And Amari and Walker moved over to corner. So then you got Tyler Morris and Darius Clemens. Those are two very interesting wide receivers. Morris came up big in the Illinois game on third down and Clemens, you know, I, you see, you saw him out there a little bit, but I think he could be um, a lot more heavily. Um, he could be a lot more, there could be a lot more usage. It took me a while to get to that, but I think he, there's a lot more targets there. And as far as the hype train goes, I'm all about it when uh, uh, it came out there. Uh, Okay. If you want to know what's going on with uh, recruiting, you can surf uh, social media like Antoine, or you can join the Maize and Blue Review today and go right to the source. Go to michigan.rivals.com. You know what's going on before everyone else fact-based and there's a great deal going on right now you buy a month you get four free you get full access today use the promo code um spring 23 that's um spring 23 we'll see you over there that's looking good now i'm going to get to some more feedback but i still have more things and this is something that has been talked about 
and there is an update. And, you know, this is Michigan's NIL that coming up tomorrow, there could be an announcement on it. And it is called Hail! Exclamation point impact. This is the this is the arm of the, the next Michigan arm of NIL. Hail exclamation point impact. It's dropping this weekend. Somebody that is heavily involved and is Jim Harbaugh's friend and confident is on social media as much as Antoine, uh, Todd Anson. And he was on today. And if you see him, he was tweeting somebody. And he was mentioning the Hail NIL monster. And he says, for those listening on the podcast, all hail. You'll see the exclamation point. A nonprofit supporting local charities. Tax deductible money can now flow into Michigan name, image, and likeness. If and when athletics get behind it, we'll have gale force wins in our NIL sales. All hail. This is a hell of a tweet, you know, from Todd Anson. He's basically saying if Ward Manuel can get behind this, Michigan's going to be an unstoppable force. If you think about it, I don't know how much you know you know, about tax deductions and, you know, just how much you could put in there. And, you know, my idea is if I give 10,000 and it's tax deductible, I'm going to get that money back. That's a pretty big deal. If you're coming over to me and say, Hey, you want to donate to the Michigan NIL? And I'd be like, "Mm, okay. And then whatever I come up with, like, okay, there it is, you know, good luck, Michigan. But now if you come back and say, Hey, Whatever you donate to Michigan for their name, image, and likeness, you can get that money back as a charitable deduction. So then I might say, you know, you might be able to gather up a little bit more. If I'm just giving the money and I'm getting it back because it's a charitable, you know, I don't need to go through it. Anymore, but I think that's the premise. You know, you can say, no, nah, you don't understand the tax code, whatever. <laughs> I think it's a big thing. Uh, I did see more of Anson's uh, tweets. Somebody was asking about donor points, which I'm not really familiar with. Maybe this gets you a better seating at Michigan Stadium and, and other nice things, you know, regarding Michigan athletics. But Todd said that right now there are no donor points. So even though this monster is being unleashed, there's no donor points attached to it. Why not? I would ask. I don't know. I would think that it should be. And then also, is all of Michigan athletics going to get behind this? Because these were the issues before. You need to have everybody rowing in the same direction. But here's how much I know. And these are, uh, you know, there's a lot of particulars. There's people who probably know a lot more about the particulars than, than me. But since last year, Michigan has talked about People inside of Michigan have talked about, we've got one on the horizon. This name, image, and likeness is going to get sprung out there, and it's going to be a game changer. And then, so it was last summer. I was like, okay, yeah, it sounds great. And then, it, it, you know, the summer wore on. It was kind of like, well, when's it going to happen? They're like, before the season. Okay, well, before the season. Well, it didn't happen. And it was like before Christmas. And then before 2023, and after a while, it was kind of like, yay, where's the big monster NIL? Well, now it's here. It's being unleashed. And, and I don't know if it's going to be a game changer, but Michigan thinks it's going to be a game changer. It's supposed to be a game changer. And this is Michigan from everything that they've done and cooked up. This is the one. This is the one that they're excited about. This is the one. And when I think game changer, like I see all the things now and you go on there and you have to do this with Title IX. And, you know, there are a lot of people that, you know, love Michigan rowing and field hockey and the opportunities they have. That's all great. But when it comes to Michigan football, if 95% of the people out there 
if, if they're trying to get the top players in football and I'll put basketball in there as well. And if they feel like that money can go to those programs or that program and they can get the money to the top players and a charitable donation, I think this is what it's about. And one thing, well, let's say one thing I know for sure, something I know for sure is that this has the full support of Jim Harbaugh, the, the person that came up with Hale exclamation point. Sorry, exact the exact wording of it uh, again. Hale exclamation point impact was a a Michigan grad 15 years ago in the business school, love the program. And he has been working on this for, I don't know how since NIL started or a year ago. And he presented it to Jim Harbaugh and Harbaugh gave it the stamp of approval. Harbaugh's big confident in social media arm, Todd Anson, been very excited about it this week, talking about it. Others that are uh, also involved and also, who are very close to Jim Harbaugh, are also very enthusiastic about this particular NIL monster that is supposed to be unleashed. Now, get athletics behind it. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Get uh, donor points along with it. You know, I don't know why. And it could have to do with Title IX things. I don't know. But this is something, if you're a Michigan fan, I would say to know that Michigan has been this is the one that this is the one. This is the thing that they think is going to put them in position to compete for a top players in football. I don't know about basketball. But this is what they think about. This is their answer to how they can land five-star recruits. This is their answer for how they can uh, cross the last bridge in terms of recruiting and getting top 100 players. Previous to this, it was was a bunch of dirty cheats out there, slide money, whatever. And then there's the other one was, um, which was true that Michigan wasn't winning and losing to Ohio state. And that was costing them because you could just say, you want to go to the college football playoff? Why do you want to play with us? That's done. And then this last one was not so much all these dirty, now that was the upfront money, but it's all pretty close now, and this is Michigan's answer without absolutely crossing the, the line and saying, here's the money. They're standing just on the other side of the bridge, like, here it is. I don't know how actually they connect those dots, but Jaden Davis, I don't know if it's – it seems ironic. I don't know if it is. I don't know if there's a link to Michigan unleashing the long awaited whale monster of their name, image, and like this is supposed to change uh, Michigan football and bring it uh, on par with name, image, and like this on the same day that a five-star quarterback is announcing. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. Nice one. If it is. And I don't even know if this is going to be a game changer. Michigan might be sitting behind the scenes like, oh, yeah, you know, you, we can get, uh, you know, an extra 25 grand for the swimming pro. I don't know. Like, that's all nice to talk about. Like, and people, oh, that's nice. You know, a field hockey, the goalie gets 10,000. Hey, that's nice. Is it going to get enough money for five stars? And so then it comes back to the rankings and everything else. Five star, five star, five star, five stars. We all like the superstars. We're drawn towards them like moss to a flame. Yeah, we all like the competition, but we always like the, the, the great ones. And five stars, we got people that are saying this is the next great one. And that, that Michigan might be able to compete for these uh, five stars. Now, without having the the under the table or upfront money, without those barriers, the possibility that that they can compete and you know this could take Michigan to the next level. 
I don't know. It, it sounds, I don't know if it sounds crazy, but or it's, or it sounds like this is just the next step. It doesn't sound crazy to me. Actually, it does not sound crazy. It sounds like Michigan's got everything. And, you know, like, except that they didn't want to, they wanted to stand on that hill and die on it. And, but they figured a way to do it. This is their way that they figured out how to compete with everyone else when it comes to paying upfront money. Will it work? They're excited about it. I think Michigan, and to me, you know, last year when the recruiting rankings were down, what did I say? Give them a year. Let's see what they do. And their answer was they went out there and Harbaugh with roster management hit the transfer portal. Michigan, uh, better than anybody in the country that I've seen. Who's been better than Michigan at keeping their stars? That were, was better than keeping Blake Corum. Keeping two guys that would be in the NFL like Trevor Keegan and, and Zach Zinter. Keeping you know, the other players with the name, image, and likeness that are on the team. They did a great job doing that. So I think my patience was rewarded. It would have been easy. Like, what's Michigan doing? I know that's what a lot of people were doing. And in this case, they're excited. This is their plan. I'm going to see. And I think, like, you say, well, do you, do you, do you think it's going to work? I'm going to say, well, this is their uh, – we're ready to find out. I don't know. It feels like if Jaden Davis comes and then Michigan's announcing this NIL plan, that it's, it's a hell of a start. I'll feel a lot better about it. And then what's going to happen in the next couple of days? And the player, 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 player. I think we'll know for sure when Michigan's landing. I was going to say landing, five, but ultimately when they are landing multiple five stars, I think we'll know there. But I think we're going to have a pretty good indication before. Davis comes to Michigan tomorrow. And then you start seeing, hey, look at this five-star. Look at that five-star. They're interested in Michigan now. Look at that five-star. It can happen. Okay, that's where I'm sitting. Let's get back to the feedback here and just see where the people are at. Let's see where we are at. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. Andres is going back to uh, Dante from last year. Okay. A prediction that Davis Warren will be more ready to play than Jaden Davis in 24. OT does not think starting Jaden Davis is a true freshman. What happened either? Now 22 doubling down, saying that people are sleeping on Warren. This is uh, probably the the best, I say the best thing that Antoine has ever written. That would be, uh, I think, hyperbole. But I think not paying too close attention to the rankings and then turning on the tape yourself. I, I think that's a, I think that's a good idea, Antoine. He says I would be surprised to know that rankings are not solely based on their ability. Some of these players get ranked just because they get offers from certain schools. I think that's facts. I think you're right there. Who's got time to make all of these evaluations? There there you go. Antoine does not like the ESPN rankings. Southern Network. They're going to be biased for the SEC. Yeah, I mean, probably. If it's a Southern Network, what's the S? in in uh sec stand for I mean, like i uh, hear it count 22 is uh reveling in the fact i, I don't know this but uh, that msu lost a four-star quarterback to tennessee today i don't know you know if, if it's true state and their whole this is spartan nil they might have uh whatever their contracts that they drew up, because state in the summer, they were reeling guys in. They were bringing them in, taking them out on the field, putting them in front of some fancy cars. Coach Tuck was, uh, you know, firing up some stogies. I think those guys left with some cash in hand, but then I think they went out and spent it all, and now they're like, 
See ya. I don't know. I don't know. I hope that's the case. But you have to. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, why? Like, you look at Michigan State right now, and you're like, mm. I mean, what's the attraction? Playing time, which is a nice attraction. It's a nice school. It's a, it's a nice campus. But those other things, yeah, money is important. That's nice. Let's see. Here's Antoine saying, Dennis, don't get it. He don't do enough research. He liked the people that watch the media lie to them every day and believe it instead of doing the research. I'm not really sure what you're talking about there, Antoine. Yeah, I'm not. I have not. And maybe I will one day uh, get into ranking and, you know, watching the high school videos of players myself and getting in there. Uh, right now, that's not really my thing. You know, I've, I've it, it, it's not. And you, you it's not something that I've ever had time to do. I've been to one high school football game since I've been a sophomore in high school. Ten years ago, my wife and I went back to a, a Livonia Franklin game. It was some kind of, I think it was a 50th, maybe a 50th anniversary or something. Distinguished alumni. I'm not sure if that, that's what she said. And I, and I went there. But when I got into radio in Ann Arbor, my first job was working the board for Michigan hockey, which was Fridays and Saturdays during the football season. After that, Red Berenson wanted me to broadcast from the Yost Ice Arena on Fridays. What I'm saying is I didn't have a lot of Fridays free from the time that I was 24 years old. And then when I went to work in Detroit, I worked Friday nights, a lot of Tiger games, Friday nights. I was um, I was on for the longest time, working uh, on Friday nights. So no high school availability there, and you know it was just something that I didn't get into. And sure enough, I you know I could pull up a lot of YouTube's and do my own rankings and everything else. But you know that's not really my thing, Antoine. If if that's something you know, like uh, uh, you know, just to be honest with you on that, uh, comparing you know the tapes of of juniors in high school. And from what I've seen in making my own evaluations, I watch them, look at the rankings, and then I'll talk about them a little bit. I'll just be honest with you about it. I'm not, um, when I do see it, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what I'm looking at, but uh, I'm not anybody that's ranking high school players right now. I'll leave that to you. And for others, you asked me to watch one tape of some kid in Virginia. And that's it. I've told you a couple times to send me some. Uh, I, I can't really send messages back to you. I've told you on Twitter. I know that you're on there or Instagram. You should send me a direct message because then I can ask you some questions and then we can talk about it from there. Well, there you go. Uh, all right. Let's see if there's any other stuff that's kind of off the topic of what's going on. Let's see. Uh, take Jaden Davis uh, off because Jake Rutledge just committed today. Oh, that's the Michigan State one, so that's why Tennessee is out? Okay. I see what you guys are doing there. I see what's happening. Uh, you could be worried a little bit. I think that you could be a little bit about uh, worried about the briefcases coming in over these next 24 hours. I can understand that. Jason... Not only he's putting his money where his, his uh, feedback is. Jason says, we get Davis tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see. John, is someone saying Jaden Davis isn't coming to Michigan? He's almost definitely coming. Uh, all of these forecasts, I'm not sure what the CBs are talking about, uh, the DBs with their CBs. But yeah, it looks like um, it looks like he's coming in. 
Uh, there has been a little bit, you know, people get a little bit worried. I, I think, and in, in, uh, Antoine said it here, I think people are worried about what happens when in sports and when it comes to money, when you have a deadline, that's when everything gets serious. And I think that, I don't know, but do I think that today and tonight and even tomorrow morning that there could be a possibility that one of these schools, not Tennessee, but it could be uh, Clemson, it could be Ohio State, do I think that there could be a call and say, look, let's say something crazy. I'll do it. Jaden, $10 million. We've got $10 million for you. I know Michigan's got their NIL monster. We've heard. We've heard about it. But we're talking $10 million. Before you ever throw a pass. Jaden might be like, I mean, you got to, are you not going to listen? You're not going to take that call? We're talking $10 million. My call might be, yeah, but what about the cat that went to uh, the Florida? They're like, we're sitting right down the street. We've got the five million in cash right now. And then when you commit and you actually sign and you get in here the first day, you're going to get the car and the car company for we'll draw up the contract. We'll have it right in front of you for special appearances. Five million more. Take the five in cash. And then we got five, four. I don't know. Is there something like that happening tonight? I think that's where the the uh, there could be some skepticism. The thing is, you know, even if he verbals tomorrow, those million, five million, ten million uh, type uh, phone calls, you know, they can still come in. Davis might think he's done. But others might be like, we're doubling down. That's it. So that's where the skepticism is. But it's going to be an exciting day. Jason's excited about him. And let's do it. That's it. We will be here at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And I don't know. We just still got, we, I guess I got to read feedback all day, all night. I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, today. 1 o'clock tomorrow. I'm off to watch a little baseball. How long is baseball? How long are I going to be interested in baseball? We'll see. Have a great day. I'm only talking about Jaden Davis and a monster NIL package tomorrow. Until then, bye.